Hi, Peter Jones, Chartered Swear, author and property investor. And in this short series of videos, we're looking at property and taxation. And in this, the fourth video, we're going to think about structuring our company and all about SIP codes and all that kind of stuff, which I know people get very excited about. So let's have a think about this. What's the best way of structuring our business? Can we run all of our property activities through one company? So, for example, could I have one company and within that company, could I hold some properties for buy to lets and could I do some flips and some sales and some trading? Well, technically, yes, you can. You don't have to set up a separate company for different activities. We talk about SIC codes, which is the classification of the company which is used at Companies House, for example. When you log into Companies House and you look through the details of different companies, they'll all have a SIC code, and that SIC code describes the activity of the company. And we'll think about the relevance of that to us in a moment because it's going to have a bearing on dealing with lenders and people like that. But can you have more than one SIC code in a company? Well, yes, you can. Technically, you can have four SIC codes per company. But the question isn't, should I have a company with all four SIC codes? The real question is, should I be doing all of those activities through one company? Now, when I set my limited company up many, many years ago, the tax landscape was completely different. And so I've done exactly that. I've bought and I've held properties in my limited company and I've flipped and traded properties through my limited company. And to be honest, I don't think it's caused me any harm at all. But going forward, I could have a few problems because the tax landscape has changed. And for example, there's now something called entrepreneur's relief. And if you want to take advantage of entrepreneur's relief, you probably have to have things set up in the right way. Now, I'm not an accountant, I'm not an IFA, I'm just a lay person giving an opinion. So I can't say too much about this. But a few months ago, I emailed my accountant, who I think is pretty good, and I asked him on what the implications would be nowadays of holding properties in a company and also trading in a company. And I won't go through all the details now because it's quite a detailed response he gave. But what I'll do is I'll stick a copy in the description or below this video so that you can read it. But his advice was separate your activities out. So going forward, if I was going to be starting today, I would separate my activities out. And actually, I have started doing that anyway. I recently set up a new limited company because I'm going to be trading some properties and I've bought some properties specifically for trading. And so I've bought them into a completely separate limited company, if that makes sense. And it seems to be the wise thing to do. So let's think about SIC codes. SIC codes are the codes which you'll register your company with at Companies House. Now, there's a little bit of confusion about this because when you set up your limited company, you won't be dealing with SIC codes at that stage. SIC codes actually only come into play when you do your company's first set of accounts. And there's only a very limited number of SIC codes which actually apply to property. So let me tell you what they are. There's 68100, which is buying and selling of own real estate. So that would be if you're going to be flipping and trading. You'd want a company with the SIC code 68100. Then there's 68209, which is other letting and operating of own or leased real estate. In other words, that's for buying and holding property and renting it out. 68209. But there's a couple of others which you might want to consider as well, depending upon what your strategy is. There's 68320, which is the management of real estate on a fee or contract basis. So if you're going to set up your own management company, for example, then that would be the SIP code which you would use. And by the way, if you were going to manage properties for other people, third parties, you definitely want to do that in a separate company. And for tax efficiency purposes, you may also consider managing your own properties for yourself, but through a separate limited company, and that would be the limited company you'd set up. And then there's also 68310, which is for real estate agencies. So if you're going to do deal packaging, for example, if you're going to source properties for other people, and you're going to do that through an limited company, then you probably want to do that with SIC code 68310. So those are the main SIC codes. Why are they important? Well, they're important because they tell companies house what you're going to be doing. And by the way, if you're going to set up a company with those SIC codes, that's what that company has to do. So don't sort of set up under a SIC code for property, then go off and try and make it into an IT company. That's probably not a good idea. It's also important from a tax point of view because it just shows what you're doing. 
But it's going to be important to lenders because lenders want to know what activity the limited company is going to be undertaking before they lend you the money. Now, now I'm not going to talk about SPVs again. I did all that in a previous series of videos. You can find them on YouTube or you can go on my blog and see them. But when you set up a limited company in the first instance and then go to a lender, the lender will be looking at you primarily to work out whether they should lend you the money, to work out whether you're a man or lady of straw or whether you've got some substance behind you which makes you lendable and if they like you they'll then lend to your limited company but they'll be looking at the SIP code of the company to make sure that you're about to engage in the right sort of activity, the sort of activity which they want to lend on. So I hope you found that helpful. Until the next time, here's to successful property investing.